Good day once again, everyone. And uh, yes, we are back. And I'm still continuing on the question that uh, we did previously. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, hey, welcome, welcome. And uh, please just hit that subscribe button. And uh, your favorite uncle, of course, will always try to give you good content as we prepare for the second paper. Right, now let's go into the next section, which is, um, you know, solving trig expressions. Right, so we're given there, they say determine, so we're doing question uh, 5.2, all right, they say to us, uh, determine the value uh, of the following expression. Right, so we've got uh, 2 sine, okay, sorry, that's 5.2. So we've got 2 sine of x cos of x into 1 plus 10 squared of x divided by uh, the 10 of x. Now, uh, the thing that we should always remember when we're trying to solve uh, trig expressions, the best thing to do is to always convert into sine and cos. And of course, uh, in this case, try to get rid of any, uh, um, you know, the fractions or whatever the case may be. All right. Or if there are any brackets. Right. So I see I've got a 10 squared of X there. So I'm going to say, well, this is 2 sine X cos of X. Uh, into 1 plus, that would be sine squared of x over cos squared of x, right? And, uh, of course, once again, this would be uh, uh, 10x is uh, sine over cos again. So, I will convert this to uh, cos of, sorry, sine of x divided by cos of x right now um if you think about it uh, ladies and gents of of course uh, there are several approaches that i can take in this okay um if i were to try and get rid of this denominator what i would need to do is multiply by cos x over sine x okay right so that uh, everything cancels out but remember what i do at the bottom I need to also do at the top. So I can multiply the top by cos x over sine x so that I make sure that I don't disturb anything. And of course, uh, that cancels with that, uh, the bottom with the top and the bottom with the top of that. Right, now let's look at uh, the top part. I can see how, right, um, if I multiply there, uh, I am going to have this guy cancel with that one, okay? So what am I now left with? I'm left with 2. Now cos multiplied by cos would give me cos squared, right? So I'd have 2 cos squared of x, right? Again, into 1 plus uh, sine squared of x uh, over cos squared of x, uh, sorry, cos squared of x, rather. Uh, cos squared of x. All right. Now, um, right. So, if I multiply into that bracket, so this multiplied by 1 would give me 2 cos squared of x, right? Plus, now, if I multiply the cos squared over that cos squared, they would cancel out. The cos squares would cancel out and I'd be left with 2 sine squared uh, of x. So that would be 2 sine squared of x. I'm sure many of you can already see this now becomes an identity, right? So that's cos squared of x plus sine squared of x if I take out 2 as a common factor. So remember that cos squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. So therefore, this equals uh, 2 multiplied by 1, which obviously becomes 2. All right. So uh, we've simplified it uh, into just one, uh, uh, one number. All right. Now let's go to the next one. So they say to us, consider uh, the expression 1 minus cos squared of uh, A, all right, uh, divided by 4 cos 90 plus A. Right, now they say to us, simplify the expression to a single trigonometric term. 
right so let's take that so we've got 5.3 uh, in this case now let's copy that down uh, so that's 1 minus cos squared of a minus cos squared of a divided by uh, in this case we've got 4 cos 90 plus a so that's 4 cos 90 plus a right now let's try and simplify that so 1 minus cos squared of a of course uh, i can already see a double angle identity remember sine squared of a plus cos squared of a would be equal to 1 isn't it so it means that if i were to isolate cos squared of a um uh, sorry sine squared of a rather uh, sine squared of a would be equal to 1 minus cos squared of a right so in this case i've got one minus cos squared of a i can represent it as a single uh, a ratio that's sine squared of a divided by now let's use our reduction formula uh, in this case now when we say cos of 90 plus let's uh, use our cast diagram again right so 90 is here so 90 plus would be in the second quadrant right how is cos in the second quadrant it's going to be negative right but in this case remember once we use 90 or 270 then we know that uh, we're going to change uh, to our co-ratio all right uh, or our co-function in this case the uh, co-ratio of course of course is sine right so in this case that would be negative sine of a now remember why is it negative because we said cos of 90 plus in this case cos would be negative in the second quadrant but it changes to sine in this case because of that 90 so therefore we've got negative the sine of a right so now let's try and uh, uh, you know try and simplify this as much as possible so we've got sine squared uh, of a right divided by negative 4 sine of a uh, so notice in this case the sine of a uh, would cancel one of those so we've got we end up with negative uh, uh, sine a over 4 or you can say this is negative 1 over 4 times the sine of a all right so this is the single trigonometric ratio that we have uh, in this case right now the next question they say to us um, determine the general solution of 1 minus cos squared of 2x uh, divided by 4 cos 90 plus 2x right uh, and by the way when they say hence i want you to always note that it means that whatever you are going to do you're going to use what you had previously right in order to solve this one now do you see the similarity so the only difference is that instead of a now we've got 2x right so we can take that expression so that's 5.3.2 so we can take that expression okay uh, now we've got um, uh, cos uh, sorry 1 minus cos squared of 2x um, so we've got 1 minus cos squared of 2x divided by uh, 4 I think it was cos of 90 plus 2x now as I did say to you uh, do you see how these are uh, kind of alike instead of the uh, of the uh, a now we've got uh, 2x right but remember this time they said it's an equation which is uh, it's equal to 0 0.21 right so that means this is equal to 0 0.21 so now the left hand side um is exactly the same as what we solved previously so let's change that so that would be minus 1 over 4 times the sine of 2x okay right so it means when we simplify this uh, that that's why they said hence so use the previous solution to actually find the answer to this right so this is equal to negative uh, i mean sorry 0 0.21 so let's try and solve that they said the general solution so i'm going to multiply both sides by negative 4 so that i try and get rid of that 
or you can divide by negative 1 over 4, uh, which is exactly the same thing. So multiply by negative 4. Remember, negative times a negative cancels. That cancels with that. With that. So I've got sine of 2x is equal to negative uh, 0 0.84, right? So that would be negative 0 0.84. Now, let's find our general solution. So in this case, we've got 2x. Uh, in fact, let me just make some space. So remember, we say 2x is equal to uh, the arc sine of negative 0 0.84, right? So in this case, um, so let's find that solution there. So uh, our arc sine, okay, of, uh, so that shift, sorry, that shift the sine of negative 0 0.84, okay? which is negative 20, 57, uh, 0.14, right? So, um, so it means 2x would be equal to negative 57.14 plus k360, right? And we know that k is an element of integers, right? But remember that uh, um, uh, for sine, you always have those two solutions, right? Now we're going to take the second solution, which is 2x is equal to 180 minus our reference angle, which is minus 57.14, right? Please remember that for sine, you always say 180 minus, right? Uh, plus K360. And of course, uh, we know that k element of integers, right? So let's try and solve for that, okay? Um, so, uh, in fact, uh, I needed to finish this one. Uh, so x in this case, uh, if I divide negative 54.14, um, that's divided by 2, okay, negative 28.57, negative 28.17 okay but please note this is also divided by 2 okay plus k 180 all right and k is an element of integers okay so that's our first solution there um, and in this case let's look at the second one so 2x is equal to 180 plus 57 okay so that's 180 negative times a negative is a positive. So that's plus 57.14. Okay, so I get 237. So that's 237.14 plus K 360. Okay, and in this case, I'm simply going to divide again everything by 2. So it means that X is equal to... Okay, I'm dividing that by 2. That's 118.57. 118.57 uh, plus 180 or K180. Okay, right. And we always remember that K is an element of integers. You don't need to write this in every step. Once you've mentioned it once, you don't need to mention it again. All right, uh, ladies and gents, uh, I think that is how the cookie crumbles. Right. And I will uh, obviously try to see you again next time and we'll be doing uh, geometry. OK, I'll make sure that I give you as much as possible when it comes to geometry. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you next time. Shop shop.